Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Alexander Bazzotti. I'm an environmental scientist, a recent college graduate from St. Mary's College of Maryland, and this is a Fusion News update for September 6, 2023. I have four main stories for you this week. One, nuclear fusion. Chinese power firm hails step forward in quest to build artificial sun. Two, first light fusion in Sandia National Laboratories announced new collaboration to test amplifier technology on the Z machine. Three, testing of heater wall panels underway. Four, the role of peel resistant protective layers and fusion reactors. Additionally, I have a few bonus stories for you at the end if you stick around. One, nuclear fusion. Chinese power firm Hales step forward in quest to build artificial sun. The China National Nuclear Corporation, CNNC, has achieved a significant feat with its latest tokamak machine, HL-2A. This remarkable device has generated a plasma current surpassing 1 million amperes, reaching the coveted high confinement mode, H mode, for the first time. Quoting the article, the company said its new reactor had overcome key technical difficulties caused by using a more powerful heat system and an advanced diverter. CNNC's breakthrough marks an advancement in plasma confinement, where the H-mode's enhanced plasma temperature and density demonstrate its profound impact. According to the article, the device was created at the Southwestern Institute of Physics in Chengdu, which serves as the capital of Sichuan. This achievement stands as a cornerstone in China's nuclear energy development strategy emphasizing the importance of confined fusion in shaping the country's energy landscape. As we look toward a cleaner energy future, China's dedication to fusion research is evident. Their participation in ITER underscores their commitment to advancing fusion science. China's strategic vision extends to achieving energy self-sufficiency, with nuclear energy playing a pivotal role. And China has made remarkable progress by tripling its nuclear power capacity in the last decade. According to research by the Tokyo-based research company Astamuse, China has filed more patents in nuclear fusion technology than any other country or region between 2011 and 2022, solidifying its place as a key player in the forefront of fusion research. Looking ahead, China aims to push for the development of an industrial prototype fusion device by 2035 and aims for large-scale commercial fusion utilization by 2050. Two. First Light Fusion and Sandia National Laboratories announced new collaboration to test amplifier technology on the Z machine. In a remarkable collaboration, FIA member First Light Fusion is set to test their proprietary technology on Sandia National Laboratories Z machine, a high powered facility known for its prowess and high energy density physics research. The Z machine is designed to generate incredibly intense magnetic fields and electrical currents creating extreme conditions with intensely high temperatures and pressures much like stars. By doing so, researchers can better understand the behavior of matter under these extreme circumstances. The Z-Machine's high energy experiments help scientists gain insights into fusion reactions, materials under extreme stress, and other fundamental aspects of physics. This collaboration opens an unprecedented window into uncharted pressure regimes, propelling the development of First Light Fusion's gain demonstrator, Machine 4. By gaining access to the Z machine, First Light Fusion can explore the unexplored by being the first private fusion company to gain access to the facility. The significance of this collaboration lies in the innovative breakthroughs it promises. First Light Fusion's amplifier technology hopes to unlock inertial fusion with a simpler and more cost-effective approach. And this venture provides invaluable insights into the technology's performance at elevated pressures. Sandia's Z machine stands as a testament to cutting edge innovation, the most powerful pulse to power facility globally. It generates astounding temperatures, pressures, and x-rays for research. Its capacity to deliver 80 trillion watts of electricity in a single shot is unparalleled, showcasing its role as a transformative platform for advancing fusion research. First Light conducted a series of experiments consisting of five shots, evaluating two distinct pressure variations within their amplifier targets. Remarkably, both targets effectively elevated the attainable pressure generated by the STAR gas gun. Specifically, they achieved pressure levels of 550 gigapascals and an astounding 950 gigapascals, which equates to 2.5 times the pressure found at the Earth's core. Dr. Nick Hawker, founder and CEO of First Light Fusion, captures the essence of this collaboration by saying, 
As we target ignition this decade, working with Sandia National Laboratories gives us an early opportunity to test our amplifiers under the same conditions as Machine 4, which will be operational by late 2027. The iteration loop of how we optimize our target technology therefore becomes much shorter and quicker, and this is critical given the urgent need for commercial fusion power. Dr. Daniel Sinars, director of the Pulse Power Sciences Center at Sandia National Laboratories says, when First Life Fusion approached us with the idea to test the key physics underpinning their proprietary concept, we saw an opportunity to both improve Sandia's capabilities for stewardship science and assist them with understanding the full potential of their novel approach to fusion. Three, testing of ITER wall panels underway. Specialists at JSCNIIEFA, part of the Russian State Nuclear Corporation Rosatom, have embarked on a pivotal phase in the development of the ITER fusion device. The fusion journey marches forward as a full-scale prototype of the first wall panel for ITER undergoes acceptance tests. This prototype, a testament to meticulous engineering, marks a critical milestone in ensuring compatibility with the device's design. The initial phase entails measuring the prototype's geometric parameters using advanced optical scanning technology. This not only ensures an alignment with specifications, but also constructs a comprehensive 3D model for further validation. The fusion community's anticipation grows as the 3D model integrates into ITER's virtual assembly. This meticulous assessment assesses compatibility with other integral components, a step forward in ensuring a harmonious functioning fusion machine. The prototype will go through various testing, including static and dynamic hydraulic tests, culminating into a hot helium leak test by year's end. Rosatom underscores the significance of the device's first wall panels. These intricate components, along with the diverter, interact directly with the hot plasma. Each first wall panel comprises an array of complex fingers, intricate multi-layer structures, a symphony of beryllium cubes, alloy bonding, and steel bases come together to form a panel each measuring approximately 2 meters by 1.5 meters by 0.5 meters. Russia shoulders a vital responsibility in the ITER project, manufacturing 179 high-energy intensive panels of the first wall. This monumental task constitutes 40% of the total device wall area and showcases Russia's commitment to pioneering fusion advancement. 4. The role of peel resistant protective layers in fusion reactors. In addition to fusion devices, fast breeder reactors and solar thermal power plants are all evolving as clean energy solutions. Leveraging components that utilize liquid metals for efficient heat transfer due to their operational requirement for high temperatures. A significant challenge in this development has been the corrosion resistance of structural materials in contact with high temperature liquid metals. Addressing this challenge, Associate Professor Masatoshi Kondo from the Tokyo Institute of Technology has investigated this chemical corrosion resistance of liquid metal coolants with key structural materials. The study revealed that corrosion stems from both the leaching of metallic components from materials in contact with liquid metal and the alloying of liquid metal and steel materials. The breakthrough centers on the creation of compact protective oxide layers on the surface of structural components preventing corrosion effectively. By fostering a persistent and resilient oxide layer that resists such corrosion, the feasibility of liquid metal-based components is significantly enhanced. The breakthrough bears relevance to fusion devices, specifically the liquid metal blanket and liquid metal diverter components fundamental for advanced energy conversion technologies. Now I have two bonus stories for you. Number one, an exotic approach to nuclear fusion from Jay Bowes in his channel, The Plasma Channel where he goes behind the scenes with FIA member Helion Energy. Number two, seven founders and CEOs discuss Fusion Power's most pressing challenges, which includes interviews with FIA members, Fusion startup CEOs, and comes from TechCrunch and Tim Deshant. That is all for Fusion News this week, and I truly hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please let me know by liking this video, leaving a comment down below, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great rest of your week.